Mama Mama Tahari. Yes, feel the fire, the fuego from Afindi. Azerbaijan's Eurovision 2021 singer. She is back with another song about a historic woman. Last year it was all about Cleopatra. This year is all about Cleopatra's musical cousin Matahari. Now they of course have no connection in history. However, the sounds are similar and guess what? I loved both or I am loving both sets of sounds. It's so mysterious. It's so Near Eastern. There's Azerbaijani flair. There's just a lot to love. The question is, is Mata Hari your girl? Should we talk about it? <laughs> Let's Let's do it. Do it. I'm a godless spy. I'm a spy. I uncover all of your secrets. I want them. There's no stopping me now. I'm a liar. Playing the game of desire ain't gonna leave no survivors. Would you fall for me now? Yes, Efendi is going for a strong historic woman. She says on weblogs.com, it is very important to talk about strong women in order to remind our beautiful ladies that despite the fact that we still live in a world full of prejudice, a woman can do anything and female power cannot be compared with anything. If suddenly you do not have enough inspiration, let the stories of strong women in history become the source of that very change and energy with which you can cope with everything and achieve even bigger success. There's a clear narrative here. You know what? Sometimes you gotta play the game to come out the winner. And Mata Hari, she kept those secrets. She did her seductressness. She did what she had to do to get that information. And I strongly suspect that Azerbaijan is gonna do what it has to do on the stage to get to the final. They're gonna invest. They're gonna, I don't know, have all the dancers in the world, all the backing vocalists in the world. I'm just so excited. I'm gonna stop rambling. And I'm gonna go to Lucy, a modern woman, to comment on this historic woman. Um, okay, so this year here at Eurovision, we have got quite a few like feminist anthems. We've got Malta, we've got Latvia, we've got Russia. And they're so authentic, genuine through and through. This is not one of them. Um, I don't feel empowered by this particularly. It doesn't feel sincere like the others do. So the whole message of female empowerment is lost on me when you've got these other women doing it a lot better and clearer and genuinely. Um, Matahari is like, it's a fun song. And when I kind of was, when I knew Effendi was coming back, I was looking for that, you know, at the end of Cleopatra, it's like, la, 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 and it's got like the big mm, mm, mm in it. I was looking for that moment again, because that was awesome. And yes, Matahari has its own moment, but it doesn't punch the same at the end, like the big finale to it. I think it's kind of, it's not dated, but it's just not as exciting or fresh. Um, there are definitely perks to this song. Like every single day, me and my other half run the house just <laughs> like all the time, even though I'm not a big fan of this song every single day i'm singing it um <laughs> so it's definitely got like a good like a, mm. a good hook there and it's catchy as hell and i i think people are going to remember it but and it, as a standalone pop song it's fun it's cool like yeah but i don't feel the message the same way if Andy does Undercover, I'm a dangerous lover, drinking my poisonous water, and you're under my spell, Jonathan. I think this is good, but I think I might just leave it at good and not quite reach the great mark. Um, yeah, I, I have a tendency to agree with Lucy on a lot of things. Um, I do think, I guess because this is so similar to Cleopatra, that you're our sort of you know reasonings are just going to be so based on how it compares to that and this does just feel like a copy that just isn't as good um unfortunately and 
you know, as much as I, I loved Cleopatra and that was quite iconic and it had a lot going for it, this just, I don't know, it just doesn't seem to reach the same level, unfortunately. And I do sort of feel it's quite style over substance. You know, the chorus is just... For like 15 seconds. So... I don't know, it does get a bit repetitive at times. And when I was first listening to it, I was like, okay, is this actually gonna go anywhere? And then the bit at the end where it does go somewhere. Let's go. It's, I don't know, for me, it feels a bit disjointed with the rest of the song. I don't know, it didn't quite, I guess, go where I was expecting it to go. And yeah, I don't know. I do enjoy the song. I enjoy listening to it and I will quite happily sing along to it. I just feel a bit disappointed um, overall. But I guess, you know, viewers at Eurovision are not really going to know about Cleopatra and they'll just go into Matahari with fresh eyes. Um, so overall, yeah, it's good, but not great. You know, it's funny. I don't know if you guys can see this because the recorder is on my screen, but the left hand side of the screen, we have me and Sanan kind of holding back our rage. And then on the right hand side, we've got Jonathan and Lucy kind of like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> so in any case, we are a house divided. Sinan, what do you think? Oh my gosh, I want to say something about, uh, Jonathan said about um, this song being similar to Cleopatra. I mean, it's not a bad thing, right? I mean, because uh, in, we should not forget that Eurovision 2020 was canceled and all, all of these dreams uh, you know, of Effendi performing Cleopatra on the stage are gone and it is okay to make a song that is similar and, you know, uh, you know, to have this dream again, as he's, as she says, she added that Cleopatra, you know, a uh, lyric in, in Matahari, uh, song, I really like it. I mean, it's, uh, you know, like, um, mm, like a link to the year, to last year's song. And I really love it. And I think it's not a bad thing at all. I mean, if you like the song, why, you know, why you make the similarity and so on? I mean, yeah. You know what? Can I say something? One family can have many beautiful girls, right? You can have many <laughs> beautiful daughters. If someone told me I looked, I don't know, girl, you look like Naomi Campbell. That's a compliment because she's stunning. Hey, you look like Tyra Banks. Stunning. You look like Heidi Klum. Amazing. It's okay <laughs> to be similar to other songs and people. I'm so yeah. sorry I interrupted. It's okay. And then the song, I think it's absolutely unique and brilliant, produced and written as well. And it's it's actually very entertaining. I don't know if you guys, the people watched my reaction video with William. <laughs> we really enjoyed it. It was really entertaining. We we completely lost ourselves and, you know, dancing all the time. And yeah, I really love that part. Um, it was Yolanda Ben, Yolanda Ben, Yolanda. Oh my gosh, that's really, really cool. And actually also, as Jonathan said, it's, uh, you know, similar, but I think it's like, a, you know, gesture to last year's song, you know, hey, I'm going to add something from you. I'm going to take something from Cleopatra and add to Matahari, you know, and I love also the Azeri Oriental ethnic sounds. I think they make the song really original. And uh, music video, of course, amazing. But maybe because of the pandemic situation, I didn't, you know, feel that much the energy i wanted to feel maybe i expected you know fire or something in the video it was only lights and um stuff and then love the ending i mean wow i no one can expect something like this like i didn't expect i was so snatched like my wig was off you know and then <laughs> 
send it to Mars. Um, I think she's very gorgeous. Um, and you know she has versatility. That part. Do you do you do you know that she made a slower version of Matahari? Did you listen to it? Mm. I think it's amazing. You can see that she can sing also. You know, slowed version another ge- uh, genre of the of this song. And I think it's a rare skill in the music industry, especially for singers. No one, uh, like, not everybody can sing, like, all of the, you know, genres or style of music, like, yeah. I think I love the slow version. I realized that, you know, she can sing, like, she's so comfortable and, you know, she loves the song. She loves her song, which is, you know, important. And you love her. I felt your passion through (laughs) Skype. Thank you so much for that soliloquy, girl. Now, look, we need to point out a few things. Fendi has been practicing pole dancing for three years. In our Wee Wee Blogs interview, you can see her dip it low, do a split, do a booty tooch, spin on a pole. Now, I'm not saying she's going to do this in Rotterdam, but those skills can be transferred laterally. Okay, if we were in a job interview, name your top skills, our girl would list pole dancing because it was on point so you could see her using that to her advantage as a seductress she's playing a seductress so perhaps she will kind of draw on that the second thing yes cleopatra music video last year that was clearly epic it was so expensive it looks like they rented a desert for the day i mean it it was unbelievable i was thinking about that movie the ten commandments you know with moses part in the red sea all of that it was biblical proportion obviously we're in a pandemic you can't really do that these days so she filmed in a black box effectively but at eurovision they'll take all the coins they would have used on renting the desert and they will blow up the stage I think this is going to be a visual feast, and that's where much of the magic of Cleopatra came, was that visual feast. The buffet is getting warmed up, okay? The song is fine. You know, I prefer Cleopatra as a song, but I think Mata Hari will come to life on the stage when we see all the tricks, because you know they're going to do something crazy. You know they're going to do something crazy. In any case, we should point out that she is singing in spot number 14, the back end of this show is full on. We go from Belgium's Hooverphonic, you know, slowish or like mid tempo ish, and then it's Israel, Eden Alena, Romania Roxen, then Azerbaijan Effendi, Ukraine Go A, Malta Destiny. It is an up tempo sprint to the finish, and Azerbaijan gets to kick off the relay race, you know, passing the baton. And you know what? The person who's got the baton first rarely drops it. It's in the handovers. So maybe there's some symbolism there. This is going to be a great ending to the show. Will she qualify? This semifinal blows my mind. It blows my mind. Because you can make a case for pretty much everyone. Not everyone, but pretty much everyone. And she's certainly in the mix. I don't think it's an obvious qualifier, but I don't think it's obviously out. I think I would put it through. I think it should go through, and I think I do think it will go through because they will deliver something so epic on the stage. However, it's this is not a guarantee because this semifinal is impossible. Lucy. Oh gosh. Um. So when I kind of in my mind I have paired together this and Ukraine kind of as they are together, as one will survive, and mm. whilst neither are particularly my taste. I think you, uh, Ukraine are bringing something, I was going to say unique, I think that's calling water wet, saying Shum is unique. Um, <laughs> it's something so different, and I think that people are going to vote for that over this. Um, I, oh, it's a really hard one to call, one of the more difficult ones of this year to call, but I think it might just slip out, because this semi-final is so tough, like, You've got Israel, which is better quality, more interesting singer, um, has been proven to be able to dance and perform, where Effendi has had situations where she hasn't performed very well on camera. Yes, I know that clip was on a breakfast TV show or whatever, but it wasn't great. 
regardless, either way, depends on the staging, what she brings. William, like you say, if they're like throwing the kitchen sink at it, yeah, it's probably going to make it maybe. But I think that if they don't, absolutely everything into this is gone. Um, They need something big to definitely make it. Um, but then again, like I was saying earlier, I can't stop singing Matahari, even though I don't like the song. Like, literally, I will hear my half just going mm-hmm, 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 to himself, and then I'm like, damn, and it's in my head all day. So <laughs> people watching this who maybe haven't like seen that song yet, they're, they're going to remember it. I think it's like either 10th or 11th place in the semi, and I have no idea. It could go so either way. Jonathan. I think overall, I do think this is going to go through. I think it will go through as sort of maybe seventh or eighth qualifier. Um, I don't think it will be right up there, maybe. Um, For me personally, out of sort of the last batch of songs, it's, I would not necessarily ditch, but I would say that Roxon for me is the one that's going to be grasping to get through. So I think Effendi coming straight after her sort of relatively mid-tempo song, um, just full bash, if you know, they really give it to the staging and just exploding onto the stage, then I think this is going to really stand out after that. Um, so... My overall instinct is that Effendi and Azerbaijan will get through. Um, Yeah, in the final, I can sort of see it maybe coming more right-hand side if it's, you know, still too style of substance for people and all the other amazing up-tempo songs that will probably make it through. Um, But yeah, I do think it will go through. Oh, I think she will go through, like... I will her to go through to the final, of course, but I think also she will go through because, you know, I think Azerbaijan never failed on staging in recent years. I mean, they had always, you know, different stagings, like creative stagings. William, you are going to say something? I, the thing is, I love Luna Moon Me Up X My Heart, but the staging, you know, it was some white platforms. I got a few in my closet. I mean, it's just... Sorry, please. (laughs) All right. But then we had uh, Chingis. He was very good. That was good. That was amazing. That was good. And um, I think this semifinal, I think we are going to be disappointed no matter what. I mean, I think one or two favorites will not go to the final because, you know, Eurovision is always full of surprises. And as... Lucy said it's very memorable. After first listen, you you always you know go and you say Mama Mata Hari, Mama Mata. It sticks in your head like forever, and yeah, it's great for a recap. Yeah, absolutely. Like if you hear it like two or three times, I think three times is the you can hear it with uh, recaps, right? And I think people will be like, Oh my gosh, I want to vote for this because yeah. Yeah, I think she should and she will qualify. Well, we have said our piece and now it is time to go around, give our scores out of a 10, along with the justification. Let's start in the United Kingdom with Lucy. I have, look, this score to me isn't that brutal, but I think to other people they think it will be. I think it's slightly (laughs) below average, so I have given it a four. Um, I I thought I was going to give a lower score because I really am not a fan of it but because of that catchy hook I have mm. raised it to near the middle um, yeah it just doesn't really it just doesn't slap the same as Cleopatra did it's not as it's just not as instantly bam it's not potential top 10 material like Cleopatra was so yeah I would like a historian to investigate the extent to which a Cleopatra slept harder than Mata Hari. All right, we're moving on to Jonathan in the UK. Um, so I did actually give this a seven out of ten um, because I do, I do actually quite really enjoy the song. I guess 
I, most of my feelings are more of disappointment because I do think that Fendi could have delivered something even better. And I was sort of, you know, I do think she had the potential to be, you know, giving us a song that was, you know, eight, eight and a half worthy sort of in my books. Um, so, yeah, overall, I, I do still really enjoy the song and I will uh, put this on repeats quite often. So seven. Oh, wow. I'm happy. Um, <laughs> I really like the song, as I said. I love the song, actually. And I think it's very memorable. It's very entertaining. It's very danceable as well. Like, you you can't tell me that you are not moving li while listening to this song. I mean, you can't. Eva, like, I listen to it, like, every day. When I go to school uh, in the morning, I put my headphones. And, you know, that bit, dum, dum, dum. I love it. And that's why I gave it 9 out of 10. Yeah. Wow. My favorite part of the song is where Fendi goes, let's start a fire, let's go. It's a let's do this moment. She lets rip. And then you have that dance break. I like when all the different hands come out. You know, they do the, the effect. They're going to give this such an original texture, original feel on that stage. This is, this, you know, this is not South London, okay? This is taking me somewhere <laughs> completely different, and I haven't been nowhere lately, so I'm excited to go there. My score was a 7.5, because, you know, anything above a 7 is hard, and I think this is really quality. I think when we see the staging, it could elevate significantly, but we're not there yet. Um... Yeah, so I'm wishing her all the best. I hope they blow it up on stage. In any case, we are not the only movie bloggers. There are dozens of us all over the world, and they too have given their scores out of a 10. And when we take the overall global average, we get... 6.57. So, it's, I mean, it's respectable, but it's not... We always say above a 7 is awesome, and this is, like, not there. So clearly it's very divisive. I think people are comparing it to Cleopatra, but Cleopatra had a music video. This has, you know, a music video in a pandemic, and there is a difference. But I respect Fendi. I, I think she's proven her vocals and the acoustic. Um, I look forward to this elevating. I mean, when you said about the music video, I still think the music video they've made this year is equally interesting. So it's not that so much. I do, I do agree with you that maybe they're comparing it musically though. Um, including myself but I do think this score is kind of like fair because it is obviously a good song to a lot of people um, but yeah it's not top 10 material it's not like the best in the pack this year so I think that's about fair oh my gosh I expected seven and above <laughs> <laughs> like for real okay uh it's interesting because uh, you say people, lo you know, uh, if people loved Cleopatra, I think they could have, they they should love this one as well when they say it's, you know, the exactly one. I don't understand. But yeah, hey, it's all right. Well, just before we go, actually, can we each just say whether we prefer Cleopatra or Matahari? Jonathan. Cleopatra. Cleopatra. Matahari. Cleopatra. But I also love her girl Matahari. It's a big family. This is a big family. In any case, that's what we think. What do you think? Does Matahari reach the epic heights of history? Will she be remembered in centuries to come thanks to Effendi? Let us know here on WeWe Blogs. Please write your opinions down this video below. I want to hear that you love the song. Please, I need support. <laughs> I need support, please. <laughs> and subscribe to our channel because we do a lot of things about you. We have We We Jam coming, oh my gosh, 19th of May. We have We We Vlog scoreboard. It's so exciting. Let's see who is going to win this year's version. Oh, Girl, do you, do you want like a spotlight and a mic? We can make this outro a TV show. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm promoting. Come yeah. on. Like, people need to watch these things, okay? <laughs> Brought to you by Sinan. <laughs> Jonathan. Uh, hit the notification bell as well so you get notified when our next videos come out and give the video a big thumbs up. And you can find us on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. And we have a podcast on 
Spotify and wherever you get your podcasts. In any case, we will see you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.